Game two comes early. An 8 o'clock wake up call for 11 o'clock start of the game. It's, uh, it's definitely different. Your, your body uh, kind of forgets what it's like to play at 11 in the morning. Buffalo! Send me, send me. 12 hours after the last out and their loss to the Rochester Red Wings, the Bisons, they're back at it again, minus Bill Selby. Well, everybody didn't know until we got in this morning. I think a lot of guys found out this morning, but we got a good, guy, a group, good group of guys here that are pulling for one another, so everybody was pretty excited. You got to throw a curveball for a strike. The Bison's bats are awake by noon. And there's a blast out toward right. It's hit well. Clark looking up, but this ball is gone. A home run for Todd Dunwoody. That's gone. It was too good to be true, Duke. 85 and sunny. Yes. <laughs> it's rapidly deteriorating. I never would imagine you guys would be playing cars during a rainbow. Can you say hi to the TV guy? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what you see here is a guy washing his hands, which you probably won't see around here very often. We play casino, uh, pluck, um, just a whole bunch of different games, whatever we feel like playing that day. Any go fish? No, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> The fun in the clubhouse comes to an end when the sun comes back out. The Bisons get one back. 18 hits will do it. Guys will start off slower, starting to swing the bat now. Just relax, because usually Eric Wedge takes forever to get on the bus. Chris Coe said you take a little while to get on the bus. Is that true? No, I don't take that long to get on the bus. Actually, I'm much better now than I was three or four years ago. The trip ends 30 hours later. Players head home, but not for long. They've got a game at one the next day.